We have such an amazing amount of good scans at the University of Kentucky Department of Emergency Medicine that I wanted to share with you guys. So periodically we have image review sessions where we take the choiciest of ultrasound examinations and we share them with the residents where we work. Now what I wanna do is I wanna take one of our brand new critical care EM and ultrasound fellowship trained physicians, Taryn Trot, and we are going to have a series that we're going to publish with you guys on the YouTubes, on the website, so you can see the pathology that we see and also know our thoughts on it. This is gonna be at number one of the core ultrasound image review. We have a special guest. It is our EM intern who was on his ultrasound month at the time of this recording. His name is Wes Barnett. Check it out. Let me know what you think. All right, uh, cheers. All right, cheers. Yay. All right, so what we're doing is image review. Now, the reason that I am doing this, that Taryn and I, Taryn Trot, MD, um, are doing this um, is because there's such good images that we get at UK and we wanted to kind of share this educational opportunity with all of you. I have a special guest today, Wes Barnett. Yep. Wes has been a physician for how long? 10 days, maybe. He's been a physician for 10 days. He's on his ultrasound month. Congratulations, you've arrived. Ultrasound. And we're gonna go through some clips. All right, full disclosure, Taryn and I have talked extensively about these. Wes has absolutely no idea. He's never seen these before because this is from like the previous couple of months. So first thing, gallbladder. This is a thing that we see a lot actually, right? Um, Someone with abdominal, abdominal pain comes in. Wes, what do you think about this clip right here? How's it look to you? Well, the gallbladder doesn't look like it has too thick of a wall. Right. Um, it looks, doesn't, I don't see any like glaring stones or or sludge sticking out at me so you i would say it. that this is fairly normal looks pretty normal looks pretty normal this is a normal gallbladder looks this is great and i 100 agree the most important thing is this area right here uh because stones um a lot of people i think i looked it up at one point it's like 20 million americans or whatever have kidney stones only 20 percent of those are symptomatic gall stones. gall stones um and they get symptomatic when they get stuck in the neck because the gallbladder, like, it can't contract against it. Can you tell me what vessel that is next to the gallbladder? Uh, for sure. So um, this right here is the portal vein. There are two different uh, kind of structures. There's this guy up here and this guy over here. One of them is uh, the common bowel duct, and the other one is the uh, hepatic artery. artery. Thanks. Now, there is a way, like, one, like, the... Combat is supposed to be on one side, like most of the time, but because it's not like there's 15% of the time, it actually is going to be switched. I don't remember it. Okay. I just throw colorful on there to know mm. which one is which. But I will tell you if I see a giant one, like here, if I see a giant portal vein and then these two are small, I never even like worry about the common bile duct. Yeah. It's if I see two big circles, then I think, well, is one of those in a large common bile duct and then I'll measure it. Okay. It's another thing. So right here, this is actually the most important part right here. It is the neck. Um, people don't actually have symptoms of stones unless it kind of gets stuck in there. Um, do you have? Do you know anybody that like you've discovered stones on and it was completely asymptomatic? Probably. I mean, I have. I feel like you yeah. come across them pretty frequently. I can't remember the last time. And you like if you just like scan your like your co interns, I bet you one of them at least one of them is going to have an asymptomatic gallstone. Actually, one of the first ultrasounds that we ever did in uh, med school, we got ultrasound pretty early. I don't yeah. know if you were here yet, but like yeah. our first year, we had to start yeah. doing ultrasounds. Yeah. And they called the guy up on the stage, and he was just full of stones and never, really never didn't known. even know it. Yeah, it was, that's it was, crazy. Yeah. So it happens. So this is normal. What do you think of this one? So this is uh, it's a little hard to see, right? Like you got right. a liver here. It's definitely liver. It's this little guy right here. It's so small. Very contracted. Very contracted. Yeah. I'm sorry. You see the portal vasculature gray. Yeah, it's all this stuff over here. Yeah. 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 I just really liked this over here. This is one of our residents like put this for me because I say hot bag when oh. when there's like a so cholecystitis they, cold they put cold bag for I me. Mean, this, this makes a good point that when it's contracted that wall can look a lot thicker. Yeah. That's very true. It's probably like the most common cause of like wall thickness is just it's contracted, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I got, uh, I don't, I know this is like a bad word. I don't know. What's a, what's a better word for pimped? It's like a better word for that. Because I was questioned. Questioned. Uh, questioned. I was asked the question, uh, and I'll remember this forever because it's ridiculous, is what was the ejection fraction of the gallbladder? 
it's 35 percent oh it's actually has one. yeah it has an ejection yeah, fraction that's normal do hottest games that <laughs> that's no, that stuff yeah. Better, yeah all right what about this guy right here it's uh, it's it it's a like really fast sweep, which is yeah. another thing. Like when you're like see pathology, you got to do like a right. slow sweep. That still right? looks like there's like some fluid kind of floating around yeah. the top. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do you I see any know, stones? Any... I don't see any stones. Yeah, me neither. We kind of lose the but neck. But I see with like some... like down here. What's all this junk towards the bottom? Is that just like you're no, fanning that... through it and you're slicing through the wall? Wait, that looks like. Shadowing from bow gas or yeah, something looks like artifact. Okay, yeah. yeah. So you don't quite get to see the next. There could be a stone could be hiding something. down there. Yeah, but you get enough information for sure before you see. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Yeah. Um, so I think, and Taryn, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that this right here is the wall, mm -hmm. and this is just pericolocystic fluid Absolutely. all the way around. Is what I think. That's a nasty looking ball. Yeah. You can see this. I mean, there's this thing called a calculus cholecystitis. Um, right. So you can get it like without a stone, which is what I think is happening right here. Pretty That's case. just people with critical illness usually, right? Yeah, yeah. especially when I see you for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, definitely. Does the echogeneity of the wall ever change or do you just go off of thickness? Uh, the echogeneity shouldn't change, it's, it's thickness. Um, it might, I don't know, I guess it might oh. be a little hypoechoic, it could be. Uh, so it's but a good it, question, it's never come up. Okay. So I would say, assume it's say the probably same. Just, yeah, it probably yeah. just stays that color, yeah. All right, what about this one, what do you think? There's also pericholocystic fluid on this one, mm -hmm. obviously. Yeah. Um, it seems like there's like an infolding. Yeah. Going through it. What do you think of that? Mm, I honestly don't know what to think of that. I think that's just the shape. Is it just like the, the way it is? That's just how it what's is. What's awesome is this looks like it's actually starting to form an abscess. You see the stranding. Yeah, that's a really good point. You see the stranding. So like, if yeah. You yeah so, so you're yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. like you're talking about this stuff, right? Yeah. Kind of like when you see an empyema, or you see stranding, and yeah. The, in the plural space. Yeah, agreed. And what do you make of the color, Wes, of the uh, the goop in there, like the bile? Is it like I would say it's more, it's more hyperechoic than it should mm -hmm. look. Yeah, that's what's that's what sludge looks like. So it's, that's just all sludge. Yeah. Okay. It's all sludge. And again, on this one, just like the other one, I've seen a really good view of the neck. I mean, this guy or girl or animal, right. I don't know who's, <laughs> who's this is, um, could you know have a common bile duct stone or this could be another uh, acaculus cholecystitis. Up here, it's like maybe a little bit of fluid up here above the liver too, so there might be like a systemic process going on. And if there's a systemic process going on, it makes me think more likely to be acaculus cholecystitis, which is my thought. Okay, so that's it for the gall bladders. Let's move on to one of my favorite topics Wes, don't trigger me, okay? I'm just giving you a warning Favorite right topics. now. Do not trigger me. What do you think of this, Wes? <laughs> I don't know how their heart's still beating. <laughs> I don't know how it's completely smashed up. That is a big pericardial effusion, right? That's I wonder how long it that's doesn't actually even been sitting there. It doesn't even fit in one screen. That's it doesn't, like, it yeah, it doesn't. You like, I mean, even if you had the curvilinear probe, you, you it would be might. less, it would be worse, you know? Cause like, yeah. So here's, here's the tricky thing about this. You're right, this is like a huge, a fusion, right? It's I just, mean, look at that heart's just struggling. It's just struggling. This is probably like, I mean, I don't know because this is just on image review. Like, I imagine that this is probably like a uremic pericardial fusion or some kind of chronic process. It's not like a trauma patient that came in, you right. know? How do you tell if it's tamponade or not? I mean, it's flailing around a little bit, but right. is it tamponade? I mean, you guys might be good enough, but for me, I honestly have to slow it down real, okay. real slow to look for the right ventricular diastolic failure like where it collapses right you know, the right ventricle yeah totally i don't know right. have you gotten good enough in your experience that you could just be like without like Wait, slowing what do you it down guess? that you can um i'm hesitant to just eyeball something that's okay. as important as this diagnosis mm -hmm. so i absolutely slow it down i use every single technique at my disposal to try and confirm or refute the diagnosis so slowing it down you can just you know scroll through and look for when the mitral valves are open and see if you visually think that free wall is collapsing put m mode on it yeah hey, you, you could talk about m mode through the free wall i think that's really useful the big thing is what the valve's doing right right because if a patient has a huge pericardial effusion and they're like hypovolemic like irrespective of their pericardial effusion they will have collapse of that ventricle but in systole what you're looking for is diastolic collapse you know it's ventricular diastole when the valves are open so see how that valve's open right there mm -hmm. the wall pops up it's closed, it collapses. So this is not tamponade. This is not tamponade. Opens, wall pops up, 
closes, it collapses. So this is actually systolic collapse of that right ventricle. This is not a patient that has tamponade. Um, the other thing too to remember is that if you see right ventricular diastolic collapse, it doesn't matter what the vital signs show. Vital signs don't matter. It's still tamponade. It's tamponade. So most of the time, in fact, if you look at the cardiology literature, most of patients in like cardiology diagnosed tamponade mm -hmm. are hypertensive because their sympathetics are going crazy. Yeah. They're, they're trying, trying to keep up. They're trying to keep up. Exactly. So if we wait until the vital signs get abnormal before we do something about it, it's like you're way behind. Well, you're, you're pretty way behind. Down, yeah. Way behind. And that's the advantage to echo because you can figure it out before they become clinically unstable. So I need you to tell me if you've ever seen the test question or if you just go for the ultrasound. Do you ever look at their neck veins? Or is that like an 80s thing? Man, have you seen our patients? You can't see their You can't see their veins. It's almost like adorable that you say that. <laughs> see? It's endearing. Yeah. Well, well, see, but the thing is, too, is that like, I mean, but to me, that's like waiting for them to become hypotensive is waiting for things like that. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Because really, and even if it's, let's say it's, you know, normal is, well, even if like they have a 5% obstruction to outflow, that's tamponade. You know what I mean? So like, I'm sure that if you have somebody that is hypotensive, tachycardic, hypoxic, they're probably going to have neck veins. So if you see that in someone who may say you don't have the ultrasound and you have a clinical suspicion of it, I would definitely take that into consideration. But I would ne definitely not use the absence of it yeah. to say they don't have tamponade. Does that make sense? This, this is a good example of RA collapse, though. Seeing, yeah, but it's still it's still RA systolic collapse. Yeah. Well, and, Which and that's is fairly non-specific as well. You can yeah. see that in a lot of states. Yeah, and that's actually and not, I'm glad you brought that up because the right atrium diastolic collapse, so right atrial atrial diastole, and then right ventricle ventricular diastole. So it's not like systole over the whole cardiac cycle, diastole over cardiac cycle. It's not how I think about it because it's harder for me to remember. Diastole is a chamber trying to fill. If the chamber collapses when it's supposed to be filling, that's shock so that's how i think about it and actually the right atrial the right atrium will show diastolic collapse earlier than the right ventricle will it's just we're not good at right atrial diastolic collapse at mm -hmm. uncovering that so that's why you look at the right ventricle instead of the right atrium that's i don't know it's a pretty sweet image man yeah it's great yeah oh oh this is one of my favorite ones to find what do you think wes Honestly, don't. I mean, this is looks like it's a peristernal short. It's it's uh, it's kind, kind of, of a, it's kind of in between. So it's a uh, in between a peristernal short and a long. It's more of a long right. than a short, but it is a bit of an oblique view. You're totally okay. right. Look at this. What's going here. on with this? Yeah, okay. absolutely. This is this is great catch. This is what's abnormal here. So we got left atrium mitral valve, left ventricle. We have the aortic valve right there. Is that a vegetation. Or yeah, or there's like a big it. old booger on that on that uh, aortic valve. And this uh, unfortunate patient. This is the same patient. Do you see the other uh, booger? It's easier to see there. Oh, they got yeah. boogers on both valves. Yeah, so there's a tricuspid valve right here, and there's a booger on that one. I don't. S there, there may, there may even be one on the mitral valve. I'll be honest they with look you. A it's it's kind of thick and like a little yeah. wispy too, but uh, definitely kind of like a. Is this from endocarditis? Or yeah. Do they have a okay. Yeah, and we actually, I mean, unfortunately, you'll you'll see like we see this a fair bit, and the classic story of this is um, they had a cold, they were given a ZPAC, they didn't get better, and they've been basically doing that for you know, two months mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you on a history like, yeah, I, I do IV drugs every once in a while. And then you see this and they have septic emboli all over the lungs. That's, you know, the, the z back isn't treating. Yeah. Is it always? z packs don't treat endocarditis? I mean, maybe if you take it for long enough, it will. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't think so. I don't think a five day course of azithromycin would, uh, would fix this patient. I know that the IV drug use of prevalence is very high in Kentucky, obviously, mm -hmm. so it's probably the most type of endocarditis you see, but have you ever seen any of the weird ones like the Muriantic endocarditis or Lemon Sacks or any of the... Any of the I mean, we see it, but it's, yeah. it's, it's rare. Out there. It's we definitely cool. see them. Especially if you have an older population with prosthetic valves. You, you that's a big one, actually. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a big across one. a few of them. Yeah. Sure. Theoretically, you can get endocarditis like without any risk factors, just like any disease, right? You can get it without any risk factors. You like brush your teeth wrong and it goes in there. Um, but once you get endocarditis, it's like a kidney stone, you're more likely to get it later because mm -hmm. the um, there's it's rough. So the valves, even if you get if you get cured, it's not a bad case. It's rough and it's more likely to seed other bacteria. So it kind of stinks. That's why these recurrent, these people that come in, actually that's, that's a, a really good thing for like a bias a thing that you gotta be careful with. Um, let's say this, you know, you have an individual who comes in, IV drug use, um, they get endocarditis, like, oh man, I gotta clean up my life, I shouldn't do it anymore. 
that patient will still get endocarditis, yeah, irrespective if they do IV drugs ever again in their life. So it's really important to not assume that. What, Evan? Uh, I know how to spell brown. That, okay, how do you spell it? B-R-W-N. That's really close. You forgot the O, that's, but that's really good though. So one of, one of the things I've learned to do recently, mm -hmm. especially if I'm looking on uh, the tricuspid valves, mm -hmm. and I think there may be a vegetation, but I'm not really sure I want to make the call. I put color flow or Doppler nice. through it. Okay. And it's pretty uncommon to have a vegetation without some regurgitation. So if you don't see a regurgitation mm -hmm. jet and you're kind of on the question, you only can see it in one view anyways, uh, that may push you one direction or another. What, is this just, I mean, it almost looks like a lead. I think that that is some kind of an artifact because it's not it moving, it's it's staying completely yeah. still relative to this, like, I guess to the probe move. So you think it's like I, a, I don't know, you know, unless you have a bioventricular pacemaker. I, I, it doesn't really make sense anyways. Yeah, that is kind artifact. of what you have to double check, make yeah. sure it's does, it, does that make sense why I think it's an artifact? It's like, if you look at the walls, it's not... If yeah, you look at the walls here, the walls and stuff. yeah, it doesn't it doesn't move with the heart. It's like it's only moving that as the sense. probe moves. So if it was a true lead, it would it would go in and yeah. out. With it. Or if it was some kind of artifact coming from the heart itself, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, you, you get those every once in a while, it's like weird things. So that was just a few of the ultrasound clips um, that we have. There's so many, and we try to pick the ones that are like the most educational to share with you guys. Um, hopefully that was helpful for you. We're going to do the next group hopefully in about a week. So hear from you soon. So that was part one of our core ultrasound image review. For a recap, gallbladder, super important. You got the fundus, you got the neck. The neck is where stones get stuck and end up causing you symptoms. Be careful for things like sludge, like pericholocystic fluid and abnormal gallbladder wall thickening. And we had some pretty sweet cardiac views. Remember with the apical four chamber view, you wanna get that nice up and down view of that heart. When you have a patient with a large pericardial fusion, look for chamber diastolic collapse. So anytime that a chamber should be filling, make sure that it's not collapsing the, the wall of the right side, so right ventricle, right atrium. Make sure that the wall is not collapsing when it should be filling. We usually look specifically at the right ventricle. If the tricuspid valve is open, that is ventricular diastole. So if you see the dip when the valve is open, that means that that is diastolic collapse. That is sonographic tamponade, irrespective of what the patient's vital signs show. And then if you're looking for evidence of endocarditis, look for any kind of a booger, any kind of a floppy mobile mass that is attached to a valve. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts on this. If you have any feedback, any clips or cases you wanna share with us, please let us know.